Hello everyone and this topic is secure remote access and it is quite common in nowadays like uh, we often need the secure uh, we need remote support of vendors the remote support we need to take our systems remote so in this scenario sometimes we need to do work from home uh, but it is not quite common in manufacturing industry but sometimes do we see take the remote of our sap systems which we uh, remotely we access some of the level 4 or level 5 systems it is not common that we access directly level 2 level 3 systems or level 1 systems but in a smaller areas smaller industries or a small substation it is quite common that we can take remote access of even level 1 as well so for these things or also when we seek re remote support of some organizations of some vendor at those places we need to give remote access to those vendors or the suppliers so in that case we need a secure remote access so that our infrastructure should remain secure so basically secure remote access is a process of enabling secure connections to a network application or data even when users are logging in from remote locations so secure remote access reduces mttr like mean time to repair so if you have a secure remote access you can quickly give your plan to or access to that device or server to vendor and he can troubleshoot and rectify the problem so that will reduce the mttr mttr is the mean time to repair anything and boosts up time by making it faster and easier to connect to and repair ot iot iiot assets at any time from anywhere then another benefit of secure remote access shall be reliable ot remote access by providing flexible configuration options and centralized management of this solution so what are some probable technologies what we use most probably in our uh, industry so one is vpn virtual private network so this is established a connection over an existing network typically the public internet that is secured through authentication and encryption method so as you know internet is an untrusted network so we need to build a secure tunnel on this untrusted network so that our communications can flow through that tunnel and this tunnel is created by encapsulation or we can say by encryption and authentication so a vpn plus multi-factor authentication will give you a good security so that your data in transit is also secure and you are also doing identification as well as authentication with help of multiple factor authentication methods so vpn is a one of the very well accepted solution for secure remote access in industry then in vpn also ipsec protocol is used so establishes a vpn over public internet using a standard ipsec mechanism then it could be a ssl vpn also which uses secure sockets layer protocol and authentication and encryption technology built into every web browser to create a secure and encrypted connection over a less secure network like internet so vpns we can uh, implement there are multiple types of we can multiple companies multiple organizations also provide vpn there is one open vpn also so something is better than nothing so we can use that as well so ipsec vpn ssl vpn we can use for uh, setting up our vpns and then network access control so controls access to a network via combination of endpoint security measure user authentication and network security policy endpoint so if someone is accessing any network devices it could be a switch it could be a firewall that should support network access control so network access control it could be a radius authentication it could be tacx authentication or 802.1x authentication so these three types of uh, technologies we use for network access control we are ensuring the endpoint security measures we are ensuring user authentication and as well as network security policy what whatever we have implemented then another is the uh, advanced technology that is a privilege access management so it is a set of tools that secure monitor and manage access to an enterprise data from privilege account so if some privilege accounts are being are in action to take or do some tasks at the location so in that case what happens we are setting up a privilege access server so it will act as a jump server and it will monitor whatever activities we are doing on the network and from that jump server it will give you access to the devices like servers like switches or firewalls if you want to take remote or you want to do some activity on those things so all communications will stop at the privilege access server 
so uh, i said that it will act as a jump server so what is jump server jump server is just a server which allows you to navigate inside the plan with a restricted protocol so if it is configured that user a or user bob has given access for rdp to one patch management server from privilege access management he can only take rdp of that server he will not able to do any other tasks apart from the rdp he cannot Uh, do ftp he cannot uh, transfer files through that server he cannot uh, install something transfer install something on that server so he will only that will be in the rdp mode and in the monitoring mode on the, and also some of the pam solutions they have a recording capability also so everything will be recorded and in terms like whenever forensics is required these recordings can be always checked and also these pam servers can be integrated to seam servers this vpn and network access control solutions also getting integrated to seem so in case of any anomalous behavior or event that will be logged into the seem solution so here we can see this is a solution of secure remote access by clarity so how does it looks like they have a application based remote access so remote user will uh, open enter into a application it will turn on then uh, there will be a vpn communication will be set up from the firewall so it will be a vpn over ssl so browser uh, ssl functionality is being used then it will go to the secure remote access server at the site and then again ssl re reverse tunnel will be extended to the sra site so this is the source site this is the destination site and then from this site they can access plc so in this picture we can see example deployment architecture of secure remote access showing its simple configuration for multiple type of remote user So here we at this level we have multiple PLCs. Then we have uh, SSH communication, RDP communication, VNC communication, HTTP communication, whatever we want to take. So all these communications are enabled by this secure remote access side server. Then we have DMZ firewall. We have one more firewall, and it is coming from all the request from the third party technician or from the third party you know, technician or uh, remote employees. It is coming to the DMZ firewall. so this communication is the vpn through ssl then this will end on the dmz firewall then once the policies whatever is configured on this access server secure remote access access server once it is verified from here then it will extend the communication to sra site and once you will have the access to sra site then you can initiate ssh protocol to plc or rdp to hmi or vnc or https type communication and once you will have a communication from this endpoint to this endpoint then your system will look like this you enter into the system you can open a plc you can see everything so it will be a very secure access you can do a normal task you can do all those type of task on a very secure channel and it will evade it will remove the man in middle attack so what is a man in middle attack so in terms your communication at any point between these two it is not secured and encrypted and protected then someone can listen your traffic and some can replace you and he can mimic you and he will have the control of all these channels so that's why encryption identification authentication this is the key to protect this communication so that is about the secure remote access why it is required how it can be done what are the use cases we can see and what type of technologies we can implement then let's uh, wind up this chapter let's move to the next thank you